Come on, sing it if you know it. The atmosphere. Come on. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Spirit of God. is here so let your people feel it come closer and reveal it don't let this world conceal it don't let these burdens that we carry stop our hearts from healing because we've been broken for so long just trying to hold on just trying to be strong you're saying that's all gone nothing left to chase nothing left to fear our cries don't fall on the deaf ears of a god who will draw near rejoice with the great cheer we finally see clear we're blind to our trials because the lord on his mercy, focused on his grace, focused on the glory revealed when we seek his face, to enter heaven's gates, to stand before the throne, to fully know the Lord as we are fully known, and for our eyes to see what we were never shown, to see his pierced hands welcoming his children home. Let's say, come on.
point to the skies and declare, you are Lord. Come on. You are Lord. Come on, tell him. You are Lord. You have risen. You have risen from the dead. And you are Lord. And every day. amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you would lay down your life that I would be set free Jesus I sing for
There is something going on in here It's not the bright lights Not the atmosphere But we believe it In a mighty God who saves Come on, put your hands up, let's go Everything that we've ever done wrong Every heart crime Every sin has gone So let me hear it If you're grateful, you can say
Good afternoon and welcome back to Tough Questions with Youth Culture. It's so good that you've joined us again and hopefully you've been journeying all week. This is our first, no it's not our first, it's our fourth um, talk for the week and we are going to be continuing these conversations into the future. Today is a very apt conversation. We're going to be talking today about online life and posing a particular question that I'll get to in just a moment. Before I do so though, whoever you are tuned in right now, I want to encourage you just to remind yourself and anybody else in your sphere of influence that on Friday evening we've got the New Day experience coming up and we would love every single one of you to tune in and join us for that, whoever you are. But whoever you are, if you do want to join us, you must book a ticket. It's pay as you feel, so you can pay nothing or you can pay thousands of pounds to come and join us for the New Day experience. But whatever you do, you must book a ticket in order to get the link and then you can join us for that evening. It's going to be a wonderful night, so we're looking forward if you can make it and join us then. Today, now, we want to ask this question, how can we navigate through an age obsessed with the internet? And I'm so excited about this today and welcoming Adam and my friend Yaz. You're my friend as well, Adam. In fact, my friends. Great to be here. Adam and Yaz, it's good to see you both. Hi, Ben. Good. Nice to start on an awkward note with you, Adam. We, <laughs> genuinely, I mean that. You are my friend. We, it's, yeah, let's continue we're good. started. It's yeah. not sort of hurt the heart. Oh, we're all right. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, before we get going, can you just share a little bit about yourself, what you're up to, what you do for work, what's going on in your world? Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Yasmin Elizabeth, and I run an online brand called Pick Me Up Inc. I'm a mum, and I'm also a youth mentor. Excellent. Yeah. Busy yeah. life. Busy. Quality. It's great to have you here. Yes. Thank you. And Adam, why don't you share a little bit about yeah. who you are and why you're here joining the so, conversation. Yeah, I'm Adam. I, I live in London, uh, married with two kids and I'm part of the New Day team. And uh, in that role, um, I'm, I help navigate the online world for us. So that includes social media, websites, um, this broadcast that you're watching right now. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's what I do, and I guess that's why you've asked me to sit at this. It downtown. is. A lot of the reason that we're here is because of the matrix of your mind and the ideas that you have. So we're really looking forward to getting into that. Guys, obviously, we want to talk a little bit about New Day as well, and both of you have loved New Day. You're a little bit newer to the scene. Do you want to just share a little bit about your journey and story into New Day and what you love about it? Yeah, um, last year was my first ever New Day, and I loved it. Just the experience of being with that many people, worshipping God, learning about God. Um, it, yeah, there's nothing like it. Whereabouts were you serving? Um, Ribbon Factory, Ribbon Factory. obviously. Yeah. Hold tight, Ribbon Factory family. <laughs> yeah, Ribbon Factory. So, yeah, it was really, really good. Cool. And you shared a little bit, Adam, already. You've played a pretty major part in New Day. But why does it take such a particular place in your heart? Why are you so passionate about New Day? I, I can't think of any other uh, time in the year where you see the impact of God on young people in such a uh, tangible way in front mm. of your eyes. Yeah. So um, that's that's why I'm involved. I want to see impact and that and and a New Day has been an amazing part of that uh, journey for me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's great. Guys, we're going to be talking about online and obviously it's been a bit of an interesting season recently and we're going to come to that in just a moment. But any funnies just from this season, middle of March, we get locked down and it's been a load of grieving and there's been a load of stuff going on that's been really difficult and challenging. Any lighthearted moments online, oddities, things that have happened that you want to share? Shall I go? Yeah, go for um, it. <clears throat> it's not funny, but it is. But, um, so before I got my braces, um, my top tooth was a bit more out there. And I got a DM from a girl who I think she thought she was being helpful. And she DM'd me and was like, oh, I've noticed that you smile with your tongue a lot in front of your teeth. Is that because you're hiding your crooked tooth? Um, you could just use a nail file and straighten it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. So, yeah, that's my... The advice my... we get online. Yeah, literally. Nice. <laughs> I still don't think that be beats my stealth weeing that I've been doing on Zoom, but <laughs> we'll save that for another time. Um, OK, listen, we want to ask this question today. How can we navigate an age obsessed with the internet? Mm -hmm. And that's a massive question for the season that we're in right now. Um, and it has become a hot topic, I suppose. And it's not just one community asking that question anymore. I think all of us are asking it. And that's really one of, where I want to start. This season that we're in at the moment has almost forced everybody 
into a place where mm. they're online. And so we've seen the internet be graced and Instagram be graced with a larger demographic, probably. And I just wondered what your experience, I mean, Instagram online, living in that place isn't new for you, Yaz. Mm -hmm. What's it been like, old people like me joining the game? And <laughs> I was actually really happy when I saw that you had joined oh, online. No. Not going to lie, Ben. Big moment in your life. It, it, mm, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't push it. But no, um, I think it's been good. Um, especially even the church community, being able to connect with people, mm. um, but just navigating that at that time. But for me, it's been it's been quite good. Overall, a positive thing? Yeah. Okay. You're not laughing at us, really. <laughs> no, I'm not. Just sometimes. Would I do that? No, you wouldn't. You're too kind. You're too kind. Adam, what's it been like for you, just watching all this happen? Yes, yeah, so I think, um, obviously, the online world has always been there, mm. um, and the trend to be more immersed in it has always been there. But what we've seen through this period is an acceleration yeah. into that. So uh, more people online than ever before. If you think of that, you know, classic technology adoption curve of people who are early adopters through to laggards, mm -hmm. it's just been condensed. Everyone has been forced to engage with this world. So um, yeah, more people than ever being online and having to navigate that space brings all kinds of challenges with it. Yeah, and I suppose People tuned in, I and mean, we've got such a wide demographic for, for these conversations. We've got young people, we've got older people. I'm not going to say old, because, you know, just a bit older, and that's okay. Um, but we've got a wide spectrum of people new to online life that have been doing it for a long time. So the, the, there's going to be different questions. And where I want to get to is some of the opportunity that we get with online and, and living in that space and some of the opportunity for the gospel. So not just the opportunity for us to flourish in our own right, but because of the gospel, being able to have a, a space and a place. Before we go there, I do want to just nod and understand and accept the fact that online life can bring some problems, challenges, and there can be some negatives around online life. And so can we just start there, Yaz? I wonder, you've definitely been living in this world longer than I have. Yeah. Just maybe even just from some of your own stories, some mm -hmm. of the negativity that would be around being online a lot. Um, so I first, if I'm going to speak about online, I'm mainly speaking about Instagram for me. Um, I joined Instagram in 2011 and actually that was before you could deactivate accounts. So I'm actually on my fourth Instagram account because I had deleted the other ones because I needed a break, I needed time off. Um, and I think sometimes what can come up is that kind of comparison of not feeling like you're doing enough or that person always looks like they're on holiday and you're there you know, counting your pennies when's your next holiday. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think for me then it was it was really hard to navigate because we are the guinea pig generation. Yeah. It, we've never experienced um, what we do now online. It, we are we are the experiment. Um, but as time has gone on, I have mm. found a good balance. Yeah. Um, what were those moments? The moments where you've gone and you've deleted an account. Mm -hmm. Um, what were those moments, what's going on for you? So yeah. like, what's going on in terms of behind the screen that no one else can see? Why, why are you getting to the place where you're shutting that off? What, what's it done to you? What's going on? I think at those times, um, the place in my identity in the wrong thing mm -hmm. and kind of almost being a bit of a, a slave to it. Um, yeah. it. It was never an issue before I became kind of popular online. It was when people started to like my stuff more. Mm -hmm. um, then came the pressure of having to always show up and always provide. Yeah. And most of the stuff that was liked by people was my real honest stories, which meant that I had to be vulnerable. Okay. Um, and I think it's a really, there's a thin line there of oversharing yep. um, and making sure that I was in a safe enough space emotionally and mentally to actually share this stuff. Yeah, um, whereas now I have better discernment, I know how to, to do that. Um, and my intention is always and has always been to uplift people. Sure. But I now know that that doesn't have to come at a cost of my mental health. So good. Um, and I think before, Again, because we are the experiment, I did not know how to... It's a trial and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and that's why I love conversations like this, because then I hope I can kind of prevent a younger generation from going down that. I feel like I've done certain things and I think I yeah. could help with... with learning which, there. Yeah, definitely. We'll come back. There's a couple of things you said that I'd love to just jump back to. But Adam, just to, to draw you into this as well, just some of the... I know you're an advocate for where we could go and the opportunity that we've got, but obviously you've, you've already mentioned it, some of the challenges, yeah. some of the negatives around online. What's your, yeah, your take? If you think, um, you know, we live predominantly in three spaces, mm -hmm. where you live, where you work and where you play. Mm -hmm. With digital, they're not physical separation between those things. They're all in one place and they're immediately, they're on your phone or mm -hmm. your laptop and they're right there. So... 
having separation from that world is, 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 is healthy. Um, so one thing that I do every year is make sure I go through a digital fast period. Mm -hmm. And that might be uh, just a, you know, a day or I've been doing the whole of the month of January. You'll see wow. me walking around with this really ugly Nokia 3310 wow. phone. Any uh, good games, though? Yeah, Snake. Come on. <laughs> bring Snake back. <laughs> but you can't get on the internet. Like, texting people is really clunky and slow. Basically, people can get hold of you because they can ring the number. Yeah, or you yeah. can ring them and that's it. And you do a whole month. Do a whole month. It just resets yeah. you. So yeah. um, those little addictions, which you started to... The yeah, adrenaline um, spikes when you checked your phone, maybe... Yeah too early in the morning or too late at night and you start being drawn into that world, it just resets. So yeah. that's one thing I found this is a healthy routine to go through. Yeah, and there's a, a series a while back that we looked at as a local church. We were looking at Sabbath, we were looking at rest. And for me, Vicky, and we've got two little boys, we, we don't always get this right. And um, me and Vicky have different challenges with the online. She's a scroller, I'm not so much, but we, we both do have tendencies to jump on our phones. So we've tried to part of our Sabbath. And one of the things that we want to try and install into the kids would be having 24 hours together as family and, and friends as well, mm -hmm. but not being digital, not being, and sometimes we'll watch a film together, but phones, we try to keep to to a limit. Mm. Would that be similar for you, Yaz? Is there anything, again, yeah, I mean, you've... I've you got my Nokia right here. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Snakes is on there. Um, I think, again, like yourself, I don't do a whole month. I actually kind of alternate between the two phones. Okay. Um, in this season, the last two months, for example, I've more used my Nokia during the week and I've had my iPhone on on the weekends. Okay. And it is just to limit that being overly connected. I think we're living in this world where we almost feel entitled to have contact with someone wow. and we get annoyed. Oh, why haven't they texted me back? Or if, yeah. God forbid, if you get a blue tick on WhatsApp and they don't respond in the space of 10 minutes. That, that is annoying. It's, and it's, it happens I mean, to me a lot, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, you know, there's a boundary there of, you know, we're yeah. not actually entitled to people's time as quickly so as we want. So, um, so, yeah, that's my, I'm with you on the Nokia Flex there. Uh, and what about some of the, I mean, you've gone there a little bit, but some of the pressures um, that you've experienced, but also that you're observing mm -hmm. in people, some of the desires for likes and followers. Do you want to just talk around that? Because there's, yeah. a, there's a lot that you've learned and I think some wisdom to be imparted as well. Yeah, I think we have kind of become a generation that is so desensitized to numbers. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is we almost forget about the one. So we want to go for a thousand people and a thousand followers. And, you know, that picture wasn't good if you didn't get more than 10 likes. Mm -hmm. and, I, and for me, I've just looked at it as if you have... 20 followers on your Instagram yeah. and some people don't even want to post because they're like, I've only got 20 followers but 20 followers that's 20 people if you woke up and at the end of your bed those 20 people were at the end of your bed waiting to hear what you had to say that's quite a lot of people I would now, be concerned first though <laughs> you know that <laughs> well I know I know what you do so <laughs> we won't go there no. um but my point is, that's 10 or 20 or 300, whatever your following is, that is a load of people that you can actually sow a good seed into. Wow. And um, I think there's so much negativity and there's so much um, of the world on social media. Yeah, yeah. For me, my followers, I'm like, wow, I get to impart some goodness into you today. So and that good. is actually a blessing and it's yeah. an honor, especially as a Christian, yeah. to be able to wake up and, you know, I think you would have seen me during quarantine reading <laughs> Psalms yeah. with the, the Bible. Just seen you do incredible things <laughs> in lockdown. There's been dancing as well and but worshipping. And no, honestly, it's a blessing. It truly is a blessing when you say that word. It is. Yeah. You Vicky have a great time. It's, it's so <laughs> the broom. The broom. Yeah, that was a highlight. But no, that's just my point about there doesn't need to be a pressure on these likes and followers that like, these are not just numbers these are people mm. with a life with with their own things going on and um i think we have become desensitized to wanting more 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 forgetting that these are just real life human beings like us yeah, yeah. um and that's where the pressure for me i don't care about followers i have two platforms one is my brand and one is my personal one okay. um and they they they've got a healthy following yeah. um i've grown them organically i yeah. don't do any crazy stuff to get followers because i do believe that by 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 serving the people that you have they they will bring more people but it's not about that it's just about taking up the space that yeah. i actually have um and that's taken the pressure off a lot and sometimes i'll get a message and that message will hold so much weight that and even if it's one person it's lovely if you get about 70 messages saying yeah, oh, that's yeah. really helped but if one person tells you how something you've posted has impacted them in some way 
to me that is just and it's, it's on a free app like that that is that is a blessing yeah. for me that's amazing yeah that's so good adam would you want to add anything to to that i mean yeah the the, the opportunity for um for christians and the church mm. to engage the digital space and yeah. to um the, the world is not just physical anymore yeah. um for the last 30 years it's become more and more digital yeah. and what i'm definitely not advocating for is a purely digital world mm. i think that would be really sad and 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 just lack the the beauty of the physical world in a way that i i don't want that and i don't yeah, think any yeah. of us want that but the digital world can be a great complement to it yes and the reality is it's there that's where people are yeah, yeah. so particularly during this season we've seen a uh, more immersion into that world than ever before yeah so if the church and as christians we don't go there it's like we're just in this own little bubble yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got this great news and we want to share it yeah and we're going to go there in a bit and I, I want us to to land i want us to drill into the opportunity what i'm hearing as well with what you're both saying and actually i know this is something that, that you're really passionate about yeah as it has been there, there's actually a responsibility therefore online yeah so this isn't um there's a responsibility for the generations, and we've talked about this on, on every show that we've done, um, we're, we're looking at this is about generations coming together. So this isn't, we're not having this conversation to point the finger at young people, do online better. What we're saying is generationally, let's come together and learn mm -hmm. with the guinea pig generation, it's plural probably, how do we do this stuff really well? I love the fact that you see it as an opportunity to bless, an opportunity to present the gospel. Mm -hmm. With that, therefore, does come responsibility. So yeah. let's not shy away from the fact there are some people that are online that grace our feeds that are just like, OK, probably <laughs> not going to listen to what that person is saying in the nicest way. So there is a responsibility. I want to look at that from two angles. Mm -hmm. Number one, our personal responsibility. And number two, how do we take responsibility in terms of educating other people? Mm -hmm. So just let's just look at ourselves. How do, we, how do we push into the personal responsibility that we have if we choose to be in the online space, yeah. we have to think about how we present what we say, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Again, just some thoughts around that from either of you. Do you want to start, Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, I think if we're being honest as well, not everybody was made for a time as this, but there are some people, bring a bit of Esther in, that were made for such a time as this. Mm. And for me, for somebody who has navigated the online world and I have figured out what works for me, mm. what works for me is when I look after myself yeah. um, offline. So okay. if what I'm producing online is great fruits, but I need to have a, an abundance of fruits in my offline world, yeah, it can't amen. be. And, and I think for a time it was actually the other way around. Okay. Um, and also just having good discernment and wisdom. You've messaged me before about stuff, I've, like a book I've posted and you've not told me not to read that book, but you've said, yeah, I just want you to be aware of this. And yeah. I said to you, oh, I'm so grateful you've, you've reached out. And it's yeah. about having that that meekness, that humbleness to yeah. be able to take correction and to yeah. be obedient to that. Like to me, you're, you're, you're a leader, so I'm gonna listen to what you say mm. um, because I know that it's in the best interest and you're saying it with good heart. Mm. Um, I think then in terms of the church and partnership in with, with like maybe the older generation and the younger, I yeah. think there's something so key that we're missing. Yeah. Um, you've got these young people who you can give a phone to and they can, even me, I'm quite young, but they can just do crazy things. Yeah. I'm not on TikTok yet. So, <laughs> um, and then you've got the older generation who kind of disqualify themselves from this space of thinking okay. it's not for me. When actually, if you, like I said, not to be cheesy and say buddy up, yeah. but if you put an older uh, leader or an older person from the church with a younger person together, they could actually probably do something really good. That older person's going to come in with wisdom that that younger person just doesn't have because yeah, yeah. you know we can gain knowledge through life and i just think both have something to give yeah. and then i also don't believe that you know i don't believe you run out of dreams and passion as you grow older mm. so for me then what about the older person that has a goal who wants to i don't know write a book or start art you can use social media for that get that young person to help you get that online yeah. um and in terms of responsibility like I said, there's a responsibility of self where you have to work out, am I spending too much time on this? How much time is this taking up? And that's where we have to have good discernment on it as yeah. well. I mean, I love everything that you're saying. Mm. I really do. Mm. And I think, again, the, the generations working together is a sweet spot. Yeah. And, and we have to keep understanding whoever we are, whatever age we are, there is a role for both to play. In, mm. in the same way, I think... One of the things that vexes me is when you're not seeing wisdom in terms of content that, that goes out. Yeah. I think, like you said, when we have a conversation like that, there's a humility, there's a relationship there. 
for some people, you're sort of thinking, I don't even know if you've got a relationship with anybody. I don't know where this is coming from. Mm -hmm. You're sort of thinking, there's just a danger to that. In the same way, if you stood on a box in the middle of a town or a city and just started talking, you'd want that to come from somewhere. And so I just, I would want to say to our listeners and people that are watching, what you've just said is profound, it's important. There is a space for, for the older generations online. But at the very least, even if you don't want to go online, help disciple and encourage the young people and younger people listen yeah listen to the years of wisdom the experience of the word of god it isn't that the message has changed yeah it's that the platform for the message to be carried has, has moved the vehicle has moved so adam do you want to i know yeah. this is all your language you love it all so. i mean so uh, i'm 40 this year which means my teenage years I didn't need to navigate social media. Mm. Um, I didn't have an email address until I was at university. I didn't have a Facebook account until mid-20s. So in lots of ways, I'm unqualified to talk about how do you navigate your teenage years mm. on social media. Yet technology mirrors real relationships, mm. real experience. So um, for those of us that, that didn't have to navigate, we still got so much wisdom to give yeah. to this space. So the fact that we might not know the difference between TikTok or Discord or, or whatever doesn't matter. You've got life experience and how to build relationships. And there's a role for us to father and mother into this space. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, as Rebecca said yesterday, I, I'm a big fan of the table. Yes. Get people around the table, get, get them involved in it and model it well. Yeah. Mm. So the fact that you don't know the intricacies of the platform or what these things are, doesn't matter. Yeah, if you yeah. model how to have real relationships, then that will, trans, you know, that will be mirrored into the digital space. So yeah. that's, that would be what I would say. That's brilliant. And different, different ages, backgrounds, sitting around a table. We're just pushing into that all the time at the moment here at New Day. It's awesome. I love it. And I, I was thinking the other day, it's a little bit like, um, genuinely, I've heard people sort of say, oh, I'm not going to worry about online. I, you know, it, it would literally be like taking a generation and just sending them off to a desert island on their own. This does exist. I think you said earlier, online isn't going anywhere. We yeah, can't right. just point the finger at online as an older generation and say, that's bad and forget about it. It, it exists it's happening community is happening an authentic community it's not even yes we believe in the physical we do and we're, none of us are saying that we shouldn't but there are communities online and they need to be reached they need the love and the grace of jesus the same as all of us do because like you say they're real people they're not just stats and i, I do sorry yeah, i do it. think yeah. as a christian as well um if I can speak into it from a Christian aspect, is that we see social media as just so bad sometimes because it is saturated with the way of the world. Mm. And I think we are called to be in, in, in the world, but not of the world. And I think for me, it's again, an honor to show people another way yeah. that we're called to be the salt, we're called to be the light. And um, I just don't believe that God is limited to Christian cafes and Christian bookstores. He has authority everywhere. And oh. it's like a pleasure to be able to be like, yeah, like, I'm not even coming online by myself. When I log in, I said it to you earlier, yeah. I'm armed up. I've got that. the armor of God. Yeah. I've got the Holy Spirit. And I don't even have to ask him to come yeah. because he's dwelling here with me. He's ready yeah. to partner with me in this stuff. Yeah. And that's why, um, you know, I don't want to be boring about social media because but God is not boring. To be able to pray into stuff before I post it, God, is this of you? Because if it's of you, I don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. It, I, am I doing a good thing? Is this actually going to help other people? Yeah. Um, and even if that is just having fun and being creative on social media hmm. um it's partnering with god in that yeah. and i just don't think i think sometimes we separate and it's like no god has authority everywhere Love he's it. got his hand on this yeah. um so, so yeah. the same way that we might have been i don't know five ten years ago we're, we're trying to preach to the church saying you know walking with jesus isn't just about mm -hmm. sundays walking with jesus isn't just about connect group yeah I, what you're saying is like if that's legit if god's with you in every space why are we not thinking that God's in this space? Yeah. Yes. And uh, just, so, f would you be saying, like, for people, even like me, right? Yeah. I don't have as many followers, obviously, as you. We're working on your brand. We ben. are. We're going to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, we are. I told you. High five. It's going yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've blown my mind now. I'm prone. <laughs> I was just thinking of stardom. And <laughs> no, I just. But when you haven't got as many, so for me, I probably I'm not thinking in the same way as you. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about being connected with some people. Yeah. You talked earlier about that responsibility. Would mm -hmm. Would you be encouraging people like me to be much more engaged with how are you going online? What's your intentionality of being online in that space? And definitely, yeah. and especially um, the wisdom that I bring, think that you could bring. There's so many people online speaking even about the gospel, and it's not 
good doctrine mm. and it's actually quite scary because mm. there are so many young impressionable people who are tapping into these groups and they're getting drawn in thinking that they're following the Christ and it's it's not the way and um it's actually really sad and it's devastating mm. and I just think again not everyone is made for such a time as this but I believe you can partner with someone who could help you do something um yeah. even get someone to manage your account if you want to be bougie about it exactly but um Love it. I think I just think there's a space for that and I think there's opportunity missed yeah um so I think we're, we're talking about personal responsibility as in let's just be real when you're putting your stuff out there whether it's vulnerabilities mm -hmm. whether you're proclaiming something saying something I wouldn't just get up at New Day and say some stuff that I read yesterday. I'm, I'm studying, I'm reading, I'm praying. That's what's coming out. So when we're thinking about that, also this responsibility generationally to engage both ways. Mm -hmm. Where I really, and this is the bit I'm most excited about, just talking to both of you, and we're sort of building the platform for it, is the opportunity of the space that God, I believe God has moved us into as a church. And mm -hmm. Adam, I'd, I'd love you just to, to just lay this platform that me and Yaz can then jump onto as well, because <laughs> I'm excited for this. Just tell us a little bit through this season for you. I know that you've, you've been, you're very futuristic in your thinking to the point where you think robots are going to take over the world. And we'll talk about that another time. Have been. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you've deliberately pushed into your gifting in that. You've been praying, you've been seeking God, yeah. uh, researching. I'd love you just to share a bit about your findings and what you're thinking yeah. God's saying. Yeah, I, I, I finally believe we're at a, a watershed moment mm. in this. So uh, I use the analogy of uh, Blockbuster and Netflix. It's like um, our strategy as the church to bring the gospel to the world for the last 30 years has been Blockbuster. Mm. And people come once a week, we put the gospel in a little VHS cassette tape box and we give it to them and they come back a week later and we give them again. And that's been our strategy and that's been fine because we've been used to relying on the physical totally. They come to our physical location, we preach the gospel, the good news, they go out and they come back again. And it's totally changed. Hmm. And it's not that this is a, a brand new thing, it's, it's that the trend has been there, but it's been accelerated mm -hmm. into it. So it's now that all this content is available online all the time. So if as the church, we continue to be blockbuster and we expect people to come once a week to our physical location, we give them the gospel and they go away. All of the rest of the time over the week, we're missing out on the opportunity mm -hmm. to feed them the word of God. Yeah. And so I, my petition to the church at this moment is don't miss out on this. Yeah. Don't be the blockbuster that slowly becomes irrelevant over time. And also down here, what I'm not saying, like, I love the local church. Yeah. I'm not advocating for, we go, like, online church and that's it at all. I love the local church. I love local community. Yeah. But don't miss out on the online world where the world is, where the people are. We can go there. We can influence. We can bring the word of God. We can bring the gospel yeah, in amen. a way and see not just one or two saved, but mul see that multiplied. Yeah. Mm. So that this, this moment is, I mean, it's the, the great commission of Jesus when Jesus tells us and it's a, a command to go into the world and tell people about himself um, and, and it's important for us to say we're not talking about diluting the message we're not talking about diluting the gospel mm. we still believe in the physical we're going to come to that in just a moment um, but in the same way like the Roman Empire in fact had made ways in terms of the the gospel message was able to spread quickly mm. because of the infrastructure around travel that had come through the Roman Empire the Roman Empire wasn't all good, right? The internet isn't all good, but there are roads that we can use. The, the vehicle of the internet and being online is an good. opportunity for the gospel to go far and wide. We must not miss that opportunity. We must be wise, but we must not miss it. And I'm so excited uh, about the opportunity that we've got to tell more people about Jesus with the objective that they're going to engage with physical relationship that we see in the Bible. Yes, I, I mean, again, you're somebody that you're brilliant online, you love physical interaction in terms of friendships. There's been moments, even in this period, just mass blessing for you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just, just some of the experiences you've had where it's gone online into relational with the church and some of the blessings? Yeah, I'll just do a quick testimony time. Yeah, um, great. So there's a family on church, um, from church, sorry, and we really connected in this time of quarantine um, on Zoom and WhatsApp and Instagram. Mm. And they invited us when the restrictions were up. We, Me and my son, we went there for lunch uh, last week. And actually up to this point, I'd been feeling a bit overwhelmed with life. And I was like, I just need headspace. My house is small. I was like, I need a retreat or something. Obviously there's no retreats going on. Um, 
And I went to this house, to their house for lunch. And we just got talking about COVID and stuff like that. And I said, oh, you know, I um, oh, just would want to go away, would love to go away, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the husband, Nick, just turned around and said, why don't you come and stay here for two weeks? Wow. And we're going away tomorrow. And this is the first time This is the that first you've been... time I went and hung out with them at their wow. house. Wow. The first ever time. And um, I had actually prayed. Like, I'd been praying. I was like, God, you, you know my heart. Like, and the, when I'm not even like a faith-filled prayer. I'm on, the, I'm on my yoga mat, like, on the little mat exercising, <laughs> crying, like, God, please, I need something. Um, and went there, yes, the next day, yeah, and they gave me their keys. That day, I left their house the first time I went lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you left their house with, with their, their keys. keys. I love that. Um, God bless them, because they're probably watching. Love you guys. Hope yeah, you're having yeah. fun. And um, the next day, me and Cameron went and stayed there. And we've had two weeks. We're on our second week now of being able to be in a different environment, a different space. Yeah. And that has come from connecting online, yeah. um, which we've been a part of two separate ch the churches together, but different sites yeah, for all yeah. this time. Yeah. And just the chance of COVID and talking on Instagram and Zoom and WhatsApp. And then now we went there for lunch and then there was yeah. a blessing on the other side. It's so good. Thank yeah. you for sharing. That's I mean, okay. That's the kind of thing that we can see happen time and time again. Um, other opportunities that have come in this season, Adam, things that you've observed in terms of the benefits yeah. of the church being more online and, yeah. Just you th think of youth culture. Yeah. Um, uh, Owen used the phrase redeeming youth culture. Mm. Yeah. Um, Youth culture used to be downstream from main culture. This, this is this is pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like where you're going. Here. What what we've seen over the last, I guess, 20, 10 years is youth culture has gone to the apex of the pyramid. It drives and shapes mainstream culture in a way which um, it used to be like the rebellious, even side stream. Um, I remember as a teenager, the, th the things I wore were not influenced by other youth movements or or people. It would be other things. Um, but through social media and through the digital world, the influence that youth culture now has on the whole world yeah, is, yeah. is many, many times more. more we're, like, we're trying to stay young. Exactly, in, in that exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, if, if, our, if we want to redeem youth culture, we need to go to that space. And if we do it, think of the opportunity. Yeah. We're now not just redeeming a 10-year age gap in, in terms of teenagers. Mm. Yeah. That will ripple through mm. because the culture will go with it. Yeah. So when we talk about redeeming youth, that, that's my hope, is if we if you bring the word of God um, to a teenager and they grab hold of it, yeah. and for the rest of their life, they walk with God, yeah. the impact that that has, not just on them, but on the many, many other people that they will um, bring the good news to, yeah. that that's what I'm excited about. So yeah. when we talk about the digital space, I'm really seeing this through... It's an opportunity to redeem youth culture yeah. and to shape things in a way that will have generational impact, not just yeah. a moment. And, and this won't be the case for everybody, but one of the things that I've seen in this particular season is there's particular values that I would say are biblical values that in this season we've been forced into. So lockdown, for example, has pushed me into my family space. Mm. Now, because we have online, say we go back a few hundred years and I'm just, just I don't know, we don't have electricity. I, I don't really know where that takes me in history. I'm not good at history, but I don't have the internet. I know that. As a family, as we get pushed into one another, there is moments where that's just brilliant in and of itself. We can open the word of God together. Both of you guys are great parents, and I know you do that with your kids, have moments of worship, sitting around the table, everything that you're saying. But the other thing is that has been a massive blessing to us is that we get to have others come in and speak in because of online. So all of a sudden there's a context. Church context for me with the, with the boys doesn't tend to work in terms of all of us just sitting there the way that we have done church. This morning, I get up early at eight o'clock, New Day Praise. Simon Brading is leading on Instagram Live. I've got my nine and seven year old holding one phone. My wife sat in the middle of them. I'm sat on another phone and we're talking about what the word of God says together and we're praying together as a family. Mm. And Simon leads us brilliantly in that. There are, there's, there's moments like that where you sort of think, we could pray without that, but it's a wonderful thing to just yes. invite wisdom and expertise into that space yes. as well. And so just our desire around the value for family can be aided by online content. And yeah. I think we're... It just it's important for people to hear neither none of us are saying it's all about just being online and nothing mm. else matters and yes. we want to get back to corporate worship the breaking of bread the laying on our hands 
we love all of that, but it's, it's almost we're sitting selling quite special redeemed yes. around church, right? So and something I've recognised is um, my disposition to abdicate um, my, the res- spiritual responsibility yeah. for bringing my kid, kids kids yeah. up in knowing yeah. God. Wow. Um, that's been uh, aided by the physical. So I send them off to kids' work; they'll handle that. Mm. Mm. I send them off to the youth group; they'll handle that. Yeah. The opportunity, of what I feel convicted over this season, is like you said. There's these resources I can engage my children in a way and be with them. Yeah. So I'm not sending them off. I'm not abdicating responsibility. Yeah. I'm with them. I get to parent them. I get to be in those moments in a yeah. way which they're tools mm-hmm. to do that. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not looking at this as a um, we've lost something. I think we've gained something through this Amen. season. Yeah, Completely. Amen. Yeah. Is there anything you'd want to add? I mean, even part of your, in terms of one of the jobs that you've got, is mentoring young people. Yeah. So again, like everything that we're talking around, these values, and just how would you view some of what we're talking about and the benefit? Um, yeah, I think even in this season, all my work has been online, so mm. I've been able to stay connected with my young people. Now, which is really important in the job. I mean, I remember again another story you were telling. You're, you've just blessing after blessing, but. <laughs> It's really been really important for some of your young people that you particularly can stay. Can you, do yeah. you mind just sharing a bit about? Yeah, no, it's it's it's. Sorry, I'm just losing my whole thing. Um, no, it's it's been a good, a real blessing because some of my students are high risk students, yeah. um, really high risk, um, and it has just been a blessing that I can manage to keep looking after them and keep showing up and serving them. Um, and even now, I can do home visits, which is great. Right. Um, but yeah, the online has really been important, been important for yeah. us. And what about, would either of you have just in terms of, uh, as parents, just the gain for you? So obviously there's gain in terms of being able to engage kids. Is there gain just in terms of learning? We're all learning <laughs> to be parents. I mean, there's been some pretty testing times in this <laughs> season. Um, there has been for me, for sure. Uh, any just learners and, and thoughts around that and opportunities that we've got? I think this time has allowed me really to let Cameron be himself Mm. and actually to, we don't get to see our kids in their school environment. We don't really actually know what they're struggling with really or how they're talking to themselves. And something I picked up straight away is actually despite Cameron's happy, very vibrant exterior, he really talks negatively over himself. Um, So in this season, it's really allowed me to actually look at him to the point where I've actually put schoolwork aside a little bit. Mm. We've done more stuff on the Bible. We've just been doing more active stuff yeah. and getting him to speak more positively over himself because actually we we don't spend an, a huge amount of time with our, our ki- kids actually. Yeah. And even yeah. in church, like you said, we go off to children's church and it's like, yes, I get to praise the <laughs> Lord. I get to get wrecked by the spirit. And I don't have to worry about what you're doing. Yeah. It's been an, a pleasure to be able to hold that space with him. So yeah, it really has. And just to look at him as a, a different hu- a human being, not an, not something or someone I have ownership over. Yeah. He is a whole growing human being in his own right. Yeah. And I've just learned to really look at him as an individual. And it's just been such a blessing so to amazing. do that. Yeah, it has it's been. So good. Um, one of the things I forgot to say at the top is mm-hmm. to uh, invite questions to come. So I'm hoping yeah. there will be some questions that will come through. Mm-hmm. If they haven't, I'm sure some of the team will throw us some difficult ones that we can <laughs> wrestle with in just a moment. Um, but before we go there, I suppose just want to invite either of you just to, to sort of wrap up some of your thinking. Uh, the, the opportunity that we've got, the future, we've covered a lot of ground. Again, it's one of the conversations that I think we've definitely got to come back to. I mean, we could run multiple episodes on this subject and we're, we're going to do that in the future. Mm-hmm. But right now in this moment, is there anything, Adam, that you'd really want to just sort of push into? And Yeah, so you know, earlier this year when we made the difficult decision to cancel the 2020 festival, um, it felt like a loss because it was a loss. But to that point, I'd been praying that it would be the, the biggest new day we've ever had. Yeah. And that the figure of 10,000 was... Uh, a specific figure that I was praying for and as a team we were praying for. Yeah. And it felt like, oh, am, am I out of sync with what with God's promises here? Mm. Um, but then I realized that um, the opportunity, although although there's, there's grief and there's loss and we're all grieving that we're not there physically, yeah. the opportunity, there's no longer 10,000, it's 100,000 plus yeah. mm. because the online space just opens up a different way of praying yeah. and a different faith. Yeah. So... 
Um, I would love to be 10,000 people in a, in, a, in a tent in Norfolk. Yeah. But you know what? I would give it up every day of the week if we can be 100,000 people online yeah. or a million people online yeah. hearing the word of God, mm. seeking him and, and, and sharing the gospel. So yeah. I think the opportunity in the online space is massive. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Um, I think I just want to jump back a bit into the comparison thing yeah. on online I think and um, there could be a lot of young people watching this and even actually just anyone I don't think anyone's exempt from feeling that comparison mm. um, but I just really feel on my heart like comparison is a thief of joy and mm. something that I've mm. learned is um, to swap out those feelings of envy and jealousy they're feelings of the flesh they're not actually of God um, mm. and I have learned how to swap when someone's doing well instead of kind of looking on and being like, oh my God, they're doing this, or why are they doing that? I actually kind of swap that for, wow, like that's amazing they're doing that. If they can do that, I can do that. Or what are they doing? Maybe I could even message them and say, do you have any advice? And swapping that for actually gratitude of what that person's doing. And then you you then kind of partner with the Holy Spirit in that, and he gives you the fruits of the Spirit, which is like the joy, the love, the peace. Um, And I just kind of just really wanted to speak into anyone that is dealing with that comparison online is that, we are seeing a slice of people's life. Yeah. Um, and I spoke to you earlier about this, and I'll just quickly, I know we're pushed for time, but no, you're fine. for okay. me, for so, um, when we were in lockdown, I lost one of my jobs, um, and then one of my jobs got split down in half. At the time, I was still sharing a bed with my son. My son is nine, was top and tailing. Yeah. Um, on social media, I was reading my Psalms, and I was going for a run, and I was doing all these things mm. because that's what I needed to do to keep myself going. And I checked my bank account, and I'm being really transparent here. I had about minus eight pounds in my account thinking, wow, how am I going to pay my car insurance? How am I going to do this? But I realized it costs nothing to lift my arms up in praise. (laughs) Get emotional. It costs nothing to pray. Um, It costs nothing to do all these things Mm. and partner with a God that has given us the best gift ever, which is the Holy Spirit. That's right. And I think... I'm getting emotional because I know there's so many people that compare their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody would have seen that. It didn't mean that what I was posting was fake. It was real. I was still praying. I was still worshipping. I was still dancing in the kitchen with a broom. (laughs) And we loved you, didn't we? (laughs) But that's where I want people to understand that you know your life. Nobody knows your life better than you. Mm. You know your struggles. You know your battles. You know your bad habits. Mm. But you also know that you don't post all of those online. So neither is anybody else and you need to have grace of yourself and know you're just seeing a slice of somebody's life mm. which is still real but it's just a slice yeah. mm. and I just really want to speak to, I just don't know I just feel like there's people who are really struggling with their mental health because of this mm. and I really just encourage you to look at another way and I don't always think just deleting the app forever is like I said, I don't think internet is going anywhere. Yeah. So isn't it better that we navigate? So for yeah. some people that is the answer. Yeah, yeah. But for some people they can't, and I just think instead of then going back and forth on it, and then you back, you're in a cycle. Yeah. You've got to find how it works for you. Yeah. Um. And and I just wanted to encourage someone because I know there might be even people who watch me online, and I I try and keep it honest. I talk about my battles of depression, self harm. Mm. I'm transparent, but like I said, I do that. And, to on, and in a way that honours my personal story as well. Sure. Um, but I also do it because I think it's my social responsibility mm. to show both sides of a coin. Yeah. Um, but I just, yeah, I just really want to encourage anyone that is dealing with that comparison. Mm. Like I said, lockdown, everyone was like, you're getting on really great. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm, uh, yeah I'm, I'm using what I have and I'm doing what I can. Yeah. And, I, and behind yeah. the scenes of that, the, you have seen breakthrough in some of these places as well, right? Incredible. So when you're saying it's free to lift my hands... The fathers listened in, in multiple ways. And that's why I cry, because it's yeah. just the, the weight of the free gift that we have. It's, it's just beyond anything. I'll yeah. even start crying again. So He's a good guy. <laughs> He's so kind. Listen, I, I want to encourage you, Yasmin, just as you're speaking as well. And, and I think one of the, the, the pearls of wisdom we can get from someone like you is how intentional you are with the online world Mm. and it's not just about intentionality towards other people there's actually a very you're very considered in how you approach being online Mm. and you're thought out you're prayerful with it and I think I just think it's really wise online isn't going anywhere Instagram Mm. may change and there might be other vehicles and platforms and all the rest of it the reality is our kids are going to be online unless something radically changes which would be quite a world changer we have to learn how to to navigate that space and I think you're 
leading the way in that and you're doing a fantastic job and you are a blessing to so many so thank you thank you i've learned a lot even just from chatting to you today <laughs> let's um let's just see if we've got some questions and um we'll throw them all at both of you rather than me because are there any practical ways you can give us to put into practice in order to navigate the digital world it's quite a big question um but we can give that a go maybe just notifications let's talk about that yeah. right the uh, the interrupting cult, um, way that technology just you if you've got notifications turned on turn them off mm. just turn them off yeah and then you get to choose how you engage and interact with your device yeah um, your device should never be in control of you. Mm. So Sorry. turn them all off. Turn the email ones off. Turn um, any anything on social media. Yeah, and then yeah. you're in control and you decide when you want to interact with it. It's brilliant. And that's a pitfall. And I, I want to re-emphasise this. This isn't just about young people. When you're saying that, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to, like... My my phone's off all the time, and it's not Instagram particularly <laughs> just popping, but but all different apps just constantly. People wanting to be in touch with me, and I suppose a responsibility to get back or feeling this sense of oh, I must get back to them now because I've seen the message. And you've also got to understand your your brain is being rewired as right. you do that. So every time it buzzes, it gives you a little bit of adrenaline, and you oh that that's quite nice. We like um, adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like and, adrenaline. And, and so it gets reprogrammed. Yeah. So wow. it becomes an addiction. That's amazing. Yeah, is anything you'd add? Um, the notifications, but also not being on your phone in the morning. Yeah. Um, I think it, you would not go into a hotel, everyone sits down to their breakfast and I come and eat off your plate. <laughs> <laughs> That'd cause some trouble, probably. <laughs> That's not what we're going to do. I'm going <laughs> to eat off my own plate. But I think that is actually what we do when we go on our phones, on Instagram or any kind of social media where we're even on WhatsApp. Yeah. You're feeding yourself and your mind when it's at its most vulnerable state because you've just woken up. Yeah, yeah. Your your brain is not ready to combat the world or anyone. Yeah. And I think it, you're really doing yourself a disservice if you do that. Get in your Bible. Yeah. And if you don't have the physical Bible or like when I first started um, doing this, like not being on my phone in the morning, I would sign up to a plan and set my reminder for the time that I wanted to get up. So yeah. that was my my thing after yeah. yeah and i was in the bible and it just right. changes the way you then approach your day so i think that's, that's really important you guys are good at this it's good will you both promise me that you'll come back and join me for other shows that we do on this subject yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah of course why not i'll get it signed another question <laughs> when we go back to normal there is no normal post lockdown should we continue online church as well as physical church yeah i think so <laughs> a million percent i agree yeah. I think so. <laughs> and I think it's never been more um, easier to invite somebody to hear the good news of yeah. Jesus. And yeah, yeah. even when we're talking about mental health, some people have social anxiety. Some people would never step into a church. Some Definitely. people have kids and it might even be... Yeah. For me, I remember thinking, oh, God, walk into this building yeah. with my child. It was quite a lot for me, but I did it. Yeah. But it took a while. Yeah. And so it's it's a... And Good the way. other thing I'll just add to that is mm -hmm. shame. The amount of people that have left church, so it's not just reaching new people that don't know Jesus, the amount of people that have left our churches and the biggest barrier them coming back into a church physical place will often be shame. Now, we're not saying that our goal isn't, we want to get them there. Yeah. But do you know what? It's easy to sit in your room and engage with the gospel and as God starts to do a work in the heart, they're able to come back into the physical place. Adam, go go for it. So I think <laughs> He's like, come on, give me a shot at this one. <laughs> the, I mean, the, I've got a problem with the question. Sorry. Yeah, go, so on, go on. Whoever asked the question, if you're thinking about online church and physical church, you've got the question wrong. Think about church. Mm. Okay, technology will be there in whatever form. Be yes. that um, PA in a room or online streaming. It's it's church. Yeah. And so we need to th not think about how do we separate these things out but how do we do it in the very best way that we can? And that must include engaging with the online world. So, and that, so I, th I think the online world has become the front door to church. Yeah. So it's moved. A lot of churches have built Sundays to <laughs> yeah. do that, yeah, yeah. physically. Yeah. I think now the online world's the front door. That's right. You still want people to come to physical, yeah. but it needs to be one thing yeah. rather than trying to build these two separate things. Yeah, and it's important for us to say the transition as somebody comes through the front door into an online space to the physical, we're still learning, right? Yeah. So we're not sat there saying we've got all the answers, but what we're saying is, and we're hearing more and more stories of people being healed online, people coming to faith online, people being filled with the spirit online. I heard about a youth group doing a big FIFA tournament and hundreds of people tuning into the final and someone sharing their testimony. I mean, 
there is opportunity that exists there and there's still a, a way to go in terms of how we see people then transition into the physical space and that's yeah. okay we, we need to work on that and yes. um but yeah i would completely agree with both of you as well for the record okay let's take one more question if we've got one I've heard <laughs> that there is a link between social media use and mental health. What advice would you give to protect yourself and remain digitally healthy? So, I mean, that's important. There, I mean, this isn't just a question now. This is a fact. That yeah. Factually, there is a correlation between depression, anxiety and social media. Mm -hmm. So, Yas, do you want to speak into that to start with? Yeah, no, I think, again, it's about um, we have to take responsibility as well for ourselves. We're on these things. And this is why I really encourage parents or even youth leaders and the older generation. This is really, even if you're not on it, so you need to be having these conversations with your with your young people, your yeah. kids. Yeah. Um, and it's about, again, that trial and error. And that is why I'm not even going to lie, even I'm like, I need to speak about this more, what mm -hmm. I've learned. Um, but finding time to have the social detox, making sure you're checking out your screen time. Your screen time will not lie to you. You might say you spend a half an hour on a day. It will tell you you was on there for three hours yeah. and 46 I minutes. Was, I was shocked the other day. Yeah, yeah, It's a, yeah. It's a crude That's awakening, good. but it's good. Um, yeah. I think also... Um, yeah, the no phone in the morning, notifications being off, yeah. um, all those kind of things. I don't know everybody's lifestyle who's listening to this, but if there is a way that you can disconnect your life day to day all the time, it's not always on yeah. socials, then that's, yeah. I would really encourage that. I think that's brilliant. Adam? Yeah, I think um, one thing that's been really useful over the last couple of years in terms of mainstream media is reframing uh, mental health. Mm. So what what is mental health? Mm -hmm. So... Um, moving from mental illness to mental health has been a healthy reframing of that, which effectively means we've all got to look after our mental health. Yeah, we all yeah. have so it's mental not, health. There's a small section of people that, that need to deal with this. Everyone else is fine. <laughs> yeah. you know, we no. all need to look after our mental Amen. health. Amen. Mm. So if we're not talking to one another about how we're doing, yeah, including yeah. how we're engaging with online, then we're missing out yeah. on opportunities to just check in. The same way we check in about other aspects of health. Yeah. When you do a regular health check, in terms of how we're doing mentally mm. yeah. and social media, obviously a massive part of, yeah. of, of that check. Mm. Yeah, so the big push here from, from you guys, and again, would just completely agree, is actually it's, it's more about learning how to navigate and, and journey. So you, I don't have to go back far where I'm having conversations with youth leaders and church leaders, basically, and this is putting it in a nutshell, saying, you know, the internet's evil and everyone should just mm. draw a line and not, not engage. We've got to learn ways. So if there is a correlation with that, it's, it's about usage, it's about constantly being connected. How do you find ways? And both of you are saying that actually in your own personal journey, there are ways that you disconnect. There are ways where it's just you and the Lord. Sabbath matters, rhythm of life matters, being accountable matters in the word of God. In one sense, it's, it's all the things that we've been saying always. Yeah. Mm. It's just we're, we're navigating a new space and... I believe that the online world, you know, we can exist in that place and not be close up with mental health in, in terms of the negative side of mental health, as in we can have a healthy mental health life mm -hmm. and be online if we're deliberate and intentional. And I think that's what I'm hearing from both of you. And again, I just want to encourage parents and youth leaders exactly what you just said. We have to engage the space. We yeah. have to be able to tell a story. We have to be able to say, this is how we navigate it and we understand this world, not we're shut off to this world. Mm -hmm. So it's so important. I don't know if we've got one more. If we haven't, then uh, we'll finish up there. Oh, we do. How important are social platforms when looking at Sorry, looking at the functioning of church youth groups. Oh. Should have just left it at three, shouldn't <laughs> I? <laughs> I mean, I've got some thoughts on this because I'm ex-youth leader, but you're dealing with young people as well in different ways. But any thoughts? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Yeah. So I, I think for me, um, social platforms are essential. Mm -hmm. So again, I think... If we're sort of saying, well, how important are they? They're important because young people are on them. So anything that young people are on becomes important. It doesn't say that it's all good. I'm not saying that everything that young people engage with is a good thing, but it's like saying this part of youth culture, how important is it? And it's like, well, are young people doing it? Well, we must engage with it. Mm -hmm. And so I think actually understanding that platforms and you've 
been talking about this today, and both of you would be advocates for this, can actually be a vehicle for a good message. Mm. And we have to be careful. I think as, as New Day as an organisation, even this week, we're learning, OK, how do we pastor online? We've got to take everything that we've learned in the physical and some of the things that come up in conversations or from platforms, some of the things young people want to share, it's a new world and we're, we're learning that world. And I think, again, we have to be real and open. We haven't arrived yet. We're mm -hmm. not at a place where we're like, we've got it all sewn up. But we have to go there. We have to go to where these communities exist. And these platforms are where the young people exist. And so I think there's a lot of learning to do. But I think one of the best things that we can do as youth leaders and church leaders and, and anyone in the church is to throw the kitchen sink at educating yourself. How can you be a blessing online, whether that's behind the scenes or on that platform? Mm -hmm. So I think it's almost asking a question that we've already answered in a way. But I would want to really say to whoever, whoever is asking that question, we are still on a journey. There is more to learn yes. as well. I think just to add on that as well about the church being... Um, in these conversations and in these spaces otherwise these young people are gonna be learning from the world it's like when we, we don't talk about sex enough mm. um, we need things of a Christ lens on the end so yeah. I would really encourage um, I'm not a youth leader in a church but I would really encourage like you said where the youth are we need to be um, to make sure that that is a safer space and at least they're taking responsibility for how they're navigating the That's space right. it's like when you send your, pet, your kids out you teach them how to behave. You cannot be responsible for everyone else, but if I teach you yeah. the right thing, we're going to try and limit the things yeah. you're involved in. This is in. where you go, this is where you don't go. It's the go. same thing. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Yes. You are so good at this, Yasmin. <laughs> it's quality. A couple well, of things I'd just Yeah, say. go for it, Adam. Yeah. Church is trying to work out how to navigate this. Um, obviously, the safeguarding issues that come into play, so yeah. just be mm. wise with that. Yeah. Uh, but also just um, the temptation, because I know I've been in many conversations, is to create social media accounts for every different group that you're running so <laughs> yeah. you might run two different ages of youth group and students and, and all that i would just say um how can you keep people together mm. so if youth culture is actually driving a lot of mainstream culture now yeah why do you want to go and create this silo over here why not create something where um, it's more coherent across age groups as well. Wow. So don't just see it as, oh, we take all the young people over here and we'll do something, and all the oldies, they can have a really bland Instagram account, you know. Why are you looking at me? Subscriptions <laughs> for clouds and all of that type of thing. <laughs> How can you keep it together? That's it's not brilliant. easy, it's yeah, harder, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think there's, there's, there's strength in keeping it together, yeah. personally. And there, there will be spaces online where we can deal with, with some stuff, so it's not a space for everyone just to chuck everything yeah. out of the heart, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I mean, that's gold. Guys, But I've just got some stuff I want to share with people. But thank you so much for joining me today. The expertise of both of you and the way that you think is phenomenal. Um, genuinely, I've learned so much from both of you, not just today, but just over this season. And a lot of it I know has come from you researching, digging deep in God, going through difficult seasons yourselves and learning stuff. You are both a massive blessing to New Day and to the church. And so thank you so much for joining us. And I'm so excited about the future. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you for joining thank us. You. And guys, thank you for joining us as well. I just want to give you a little reminder um, about the New Day experience and just share a little bit of context to, to what's been going on. Earlier on, Adam um, just said that we've been praying over the last year or so about where New Day's been going. And before all of this happened in terms of coronavirus and lockdown, we've actually entered a space where we were we were praying for 10,000 people to come and join us at New Day and believing that God was speaking to us. Obviously, circumstances mean that we've had to cancel this year's event and it's been a great joy and a blessing to be online, but the physical event hasn't gone ahead like so many other festivals across the UK and has left us in a position like other festivals as well where we've got a deficit. And so when we're inviting people to, to give, and we're going to do that later on this evening, we're going to do that tomorrow at the New Day Experience. As we've already said, anything that you contribute in terms of buying your ticket to come to the experience is going to go to the New Day future. It's important just to understand it's not just that we can build bigger and better. Uh, there is a deficit that we need to clear. Most of you will know that we sit at the moment uh, in a local church budget, one church budget, and it's really important that we, those of us that have been on the New Day journey particularly, but those of you that may be feeling blessed um, by uh, just joining us online, understand that we really want to support this church that has been a, such a blessing to New Day over the years that has meant that we can carry on with the good work of Jesus Christ through this event. 
We believe that God has got an incredible future for New Day. The, the purpose of it is to serve the local church across this nation and even across the world. There is so much to be gained, um, we believe, in the coming days, particularly around the conversation that we've even had today. And so when we're inviting you to give later on and to give tomorrow and to buy your ticket to come along, this is what you're, you're investing into. New Day's got 16 years of history where lives have been changed and transformed by the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. We're looking forward to the next 10 years, the next 16 years, and however long God gives us this gift of New Day to see even more happen. And so whether it's one pound, whether it's 10 pounds, 10,000 pounds, whatever it is that you're able to give, it's not about how much, it's about the heart. And what I'd love you to do for the rest of the day is just consider, can I give, can I contribute to seeing this deficit cleared, but also seeing New Day propelled into the future to see hundreds, thousands of young lives changed and transformed in this generation, to see the name of Jesus lifted high, to see the church flourish and in success in this nation. So we'd love you to consider that. Be prayerful about it. If you're a youth leader or a church leader, we'd love you just to, to be pastoring your young people. Obviously, doing an offering online, there is going to need to be some conversation that happens with people that's responsible for the finances. Um, so we are encouraging young people, of course, to speak to guardians and to parents and people that are responsible for them. Youth leaders, church leaders, please do join us in this journey of faith in praying today, praying tomorrow for God to see us into the future. So on that note, thank you so much for joining us this week for Tough Questions with Youth Culture. It's been an absolute privilege. We're definitely going to be seeing you again in September to continue some of these conversations. And hopefully we'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock for New Day TV Live. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Oh